Church. For those of you that may not know me, my name is Jen Helms and I am your communications and events pastor here at Georgiana. It's always a pleasure to get to dig into scripture with you. And I'm grateful to Pastor Corky for sharing the Take 5 platform with me. So as we've already studied in the first part of Colossians, Paul is giving encouragement to the people of Colossae and also reminding them of who Jesus is, what he's done, and the power and authority that he has. And so this next section of text we're going to take a look at, Paul begins to speak to the people from his perspective. That perspective being from prison. So let's take a look, starting in chapter 1, verse 24. Paul says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions, for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Let's stop there for just a moment. Paul is letting the Colossians know that he is indeed suffering, but he is rejoicing all the while. He is suffering from a place of love for the gospel, a love for the church to know the word of God. We already know the great suffering love of Christ on the cross for us. And now Paul is experiencing a suffering love which I'd imagine would bring him even closer to Jesus. So when I thought about this suffering love and what Paul must be feeling, the closest example I have myself was when I went into labor, especially with my first little girl, because I had no idea what to expect. So I made a decision early on that I was going to have a completely natural childbirth. And when I was in the thick of it, crazy contractions, all the pain to the scales of 10 and beyond, <laughs> um, I kept reminding myself that Jesus suffered on account of my life. And therefore, I could suffer to bring life into this world. In all reality, laboring and giving birth was probably the hardest thing I've ever done physically. But being able to focus and rejoice in the love that Jesus has for me and the suffering that he endured gave me this peace and assurance in that moment. And so I imagine Paul would have a similar peace and assurance as he's sitting in prison. Now, we've all experienced moments of suffering, but in the midst do you find yourself rejoicing like Paul? I believe when our focus is on the suffering or the hurt or the trial or the circumstance, it becomes difficult to do that, difficult to endure. But if we can shift our focus in those moments to Jesus, to his love, his peace, his hope, then it becomes possible for us to rejoice. So, all right, let's continue in our passage and uh, pick it up now in verse 26. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here is where we find the hope that is the source of Paul's rejoicing. The Holy Spirit dwells within him. Jesus' suffering love on the cross and resurrection has now opened this path for the Holy Spirit to dwell permanently inside each of us. God's ultimate promise to restore all of humanity is no longer a mystery because of Jesus. Because he dwells in us, we have hope that we will one day see Christ face to face. And won't that be truly glorious? So church, my encouragement to you this week is to look beyond your suffering, your hurt, your trial, your circumstance, 
and focus on the hope that dwells right inside of you. Rejoice because you are loved more than you can possibly imagine by a holy and mighty God. Have an awesome week, church. Thank you.